Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a continuation off of my previous video and I show you guys everything that I DIY'd for our engagement party. For the first DIY, it will be the easiest and simplest out of the bunch. I went ahead and I ordered a bunch of these faux hanging plants off of Amazon. I will go ahead and link it down below. And basically I am just going to be bending the wires so that they can hang all across the pergola. And it came out super nice and beautiful, super simple. It's really giving me twilight vibes. And they do come in a bunch of different colors, but I chose white because I wanted it to look more soft and romantic and I do recommend ordering two packs that's how much I ordered and it just made it look a lot more full and more lush that way For the next DIY, I'm showing you how I made our welcome sign. So I went ahead and went into Canva and I made my design and then I actually printed it out from Walgreens and I printed it on a poster paper. It was only about $25 to print and it was same day printing. And you can really do so many things with this, but I personally had a chalkboard that I wasn't using and I just attached it with some scotch tape to the back. And then I added some of these lanterns that we use for our picnics and I just added some extra Dollar Tree florals from the floral arch and all together this cost about $30 and I am so happy with how it turned out. This is how it looked when our guests first entered into the party and I am obsessed. Next up, we're going to work on the floral arrangements and I purchased all of the florals and greenery from Trader Joe's, no surprise. It was about $100, so not bad. And then I did order about eight boxes of these little vase buds. They come in a pack of 12 and they are vintage looking. They are all mixed match. They're, some are small, some are fat, some are tall, some are skinny, and I love them. So we're gonna have a set of these on each table and we had eight tables. So it was a lot of work to do. So I went ahead and I just started filling them up as I went. Again, I will make sure to link everything in my description box down below from Amazon so you guys can purchase it too. Um, so I went ahead and I started off with the dahlias and they were seasonal and even though these were really, really pretty and I wanted them to be the focal point of the centerpieces, they were really fragile. The petals were falling all over the place. So what I did like about using the little vase buds is you can only put maybe like three, two to three flowers per vase. And it doesn't have to look super full because there's gonna be plenty of vases. So that's what I liked about doing this project. It was super simple. It was just a little tedious because it was over hundred vases that we were filling up. But I was pretty proud of this project just because you don't have to be a florist. You don't have to be super creative to do it. Um, it's just up to your imagination. You can use whatever colors, whatever flowers, whatever filler you want. I just wanted it to be like super colorful because it was in the summertime because I'm usually a neutral girly but I did want it to be colorful and then at the very end I went ahead and added some baby's breath which I know baby's breath is pretty popular and you can do baby's breath on its own which I think that is also pretty but just adding them just gave it a lot more shape it gave it a lot more dimension it gave it more filler it was just kind of the cherry on top of this project and it came together really nicely Next, we're going to be working on these customized charcuterie cups. I bought these set off of Amazon and they did come with some skewers and toothpicks, which I'll show later on in the video. And then I designed these stickers in Canva and I printed it on Sticker Mule. I always use Sticker Mule whenever I print out stickers for my business and I love it. And this is just a nice touch to add to the cups because I wanted to do charcuterie cups for the longest time and nobody's ever ordered them for me, so I thought I will do it for my partner. Party. and they turned out so cute I love it it's such a simple way to brand yourself and it just takes it to a whole new level all right now to actually start assembling these cups here are the skewers that came with the pack and I'm starting out with these salamis I got these from Costco in bulk and I'm gonna go ahead and start just placing them all on a tray and just dumping them out just because it makes it easier and faster um, when I'm assembling them as I go 
After washing my hands, I started assembling these salamis. So I'm just going to go ahead and start folding in half and fold it in half again. And I'm going to go ahead and use my skewer to stab it down the middle. And the skewer really helps to keep the shape so you don't have to worry about the fold being too perfect. And you can fluff it out afterwards so it has a lot more volume. But I decided that about five pieces per salami was the best portion for the cups that we're making. Onto the cheeses, I'm starting out with this Iberico cheese that I got from Costco, and I'm just going to start carefully slicing it into little triangle pieces. And each cup is going to get one piece of Iberico. The next cheese is probably my mom's favorite cheese. Whenever I do these boards, this is going to be Gouda. And I'm starting out with just taking off the wax part. There is a several layers of wax, so make sure you get that first and you don't have your guests eating the wax off of the cheese. So I'm just gonna start peeling that back. It's super satisfying. I'm not gonna lie, this cheese was a little bit awkward to cut just because of the shape, but I did try my best to try to cube it so we can stick it onto some skewers. This was all trial and error for me, so the first couple of skewers of cheese turned out to be really small, and I didn't like the look of that, so I went ahead and I went back and kind of tried to cut bigger pieces to put on the skewers, and I did about three pieces of Gouda cheese per skewer. The last thing that we're going to prep will be the fruit. So I'm going to start by slicing some strawberries in half. And it's strawberry season, so these strawberries were super sweet and super juicy. And the kit also came with these toothpicks with the little gold balls on top, and they fit three pieces of fruit perfectly. So I started off with the strawberry, one red grape, and then a blackberry. And I love how colorful it looks, and it just screams summertime to me. Now I placed all of the cups in an assembly line and I'm starting out with a handful of pistachio nuts at the bottom of each cup. This is going to help stabilize the cups when we start filling them. Now I'm taking these flatbed crackers. I love working with these. I love the look of them. And I am just going to be putting one on the back of each cup. And these are salt and pepper with garlic flavor. And I just love how these look compared to the round crackers. They are a little bit more expensive and pricey, but they just give it that artisan vibe, which I love. Now we're gonna be adding the star of the show, the salami skewers. These were the heaviest, so I did try to place it and balance it um, so the cups won't tip over when I'm placing them in, um, but they just fit so nice and snug in the cups. Now we're just gonna add in our Gouda cheese layer, and I am starting to get really excited at this point. My mouth is watering. These cups smell delicious, and I really want to eat them, but I had to have some self-control. Um, they just came together so nicely. Now adding on the single piece of Iberico to each cup, and these I kind of cut a little bit too small, so next time I make these I will try my best to cut them a little bit larger so they can fit better in the cup, but regardless these are still cute. Finishing off with the fruit skewer, which is probably my favorite, and adding this just brought the cups together so nicely. It was the perfect pairing and it just brought so much color as well. Here are all of the finished charcuterie cups. I am super proud of myself on how this turned out for my first time attempting this. Super easy to make. It was just really time consuming, but it was so worth it. And I'm going to be setting this up outside. So I'm just taking the charcuterie board that I use sometimes in my videos and I'm gonna be displaying all the cups on there. But first, I'm going to be adding some eucalyptus, which is my favorite. Again, I got this eucalyptus from Trader Joe's and I made sure to get a bunch of different varieties because I saw a picture on Pinterest and I kind of wanted to recreate it. And you guys know I love decorating with fresh eucalyptus. It just brings in that 
touch of greenery it just makes everything look so natural and I love it it's such an easy affordable way to decorate and it just brings in a whole lot of dimension to whatever you're displaying so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it underneath the board and then I'm gonna start transferring the cups from indoors to outdoors on this day in particular it was super super hot outside so I made sure to keep the cups indoors in the air conditioning for as long as possible and we started setting these cups out about 20 minutes before our guests started to arrive so it was such perfect timing and just seeing them all displayed out here just really really makes me super excited also a sneak peek of my dress because I did have to get ready before we started putting all of these finishing touches so I was already sweating at this point in my dress putting together all of these cups but nonetheless here's how they turned out I am super proud it just looks so amazing it looks like something out of an influencer event or something which was the goal that I had in mind and I love it so much Johnny and I were hustling to get out all of these flower vases as well. Transporting over 100 vases outside in the span of 10 minutes is not for the week, let me tell you, especially in 80 degree weather. But we did it and I'm just going to make sure that everything is evened out and making sure that all the colors are evenly spaced and distributed. One thing I have learned throughout this process is being a DIY bride really does humble you and it really does challenge you. But at the end it was so worth it. <laughs> 